Sonic Colors. Faster than speeding, you know what? Available now. Get a cool Sonic hat. What are you doing here? My name is Jeff. So, the reviews are coming in for Sonic Colors Ultimate, and in typical Sonic fan fashion, people are losing their minds. Not because the reviews are bad, but because some of them have previously reviewed Sonic Colors and have a complete 180 in opinions, including Destructoid, who went from a 4.5 to an 8.5. And I'll get into all this and why Sonic fans are combusting in rage. Also, hit like and double check your subbed to the number one source of all all Sonic news, the Sonic show. Because if you guys don't hit like and comment, I will lose the spot of number one source of Sonic news, and that's simply unacceptable. Let's start first with the Destructoid reviews, and then we'll get into the mindset of the people losing it over this. So, in Destructoid's original Sonic Colors review, in which the game received a 4.5, they wrote that its first few stages were fun, then come the laggy controls, broken homing attacks, pitfalls, and 2D platforming sections so badly presented you'd think they were patched together by chimpanzees. <laughs> It sounds like I wrote this. In reading through the review, it's clear his least favorite parts were the 2D sections due to their controls and physics being wonky. Something understandable. It's a common complaint that the physics in the 2D sections didn't feel nearly as good as Sonic's standalone 2D entries. Another complaint is the controls because the same button for double jump is mapped to your homing attack. It's worth noting that they have added customizable controls in the new one to try and counter this. However, I'm not sure if you're able to separate the double jump and homing attack though. One thing the reviewer does like is the wisp feature saying they added a lot of fun and interesting gameplay mechanics. And his last complaint is that the levels got less inspired and more boring as you progressed. He also complained about the pitfalls, which I think will be fixed with the tail save. Oh, and he says that Sonic 4 was an improvement in the series and that this was a step back? Excuse me? Me? Have you played Sonic 4? Not awful, but not better than this. Okay, so now let's get to the new Sonic Colors Ultimate review. They gave this one an 8.5, which is four points higher than before. So the first thing that they enjoyed was the Wisp mechanic, just like the other reviewer. They enjoyed the replayability with the multiple paths, which does sound fun. They thought the levels were gorgeous and loved them all except Asteroid Coaster. And when we thought the game looked bad, that's the level they kept showing off, so I find this funny. They enjoyed the challenge of the levels a lot, but we're less impressed with the bosses in the game, many being reused. The reviewer wishes the bosses were reworked from the ground up, and as someone who always enjoys new experiences and finding new ways to tackle bosses, I would agree with them. However, here's where they start to crack. It was going all good, but they suggested Unleash Remaster, which I've made a video on here, and also a Black Knight Remaster? Which regardless of how you feel about that game, if we get Black Knight before Adventure, Sonic is canceled. But yeah, that's the end of the review. It's surprisingly positive, like no real complaints. I wish they'd talk about the 2D and 3D sections gameplay more, because not only am I curious if they tighten up the controls on the 2D parts, but what their experience was of how those areas played. So yeah, an 8.5, a pretty good review, but I wish they went more in depth in some areas. But when considering how different these two scores are, there's a lot to account for. You guys gotta consider that these are individual people reviewing and aren't clones of the same people. Like IGN, for example. They have different tastes and opinions, and while they are all under IGN, they don't have the same personality and will review games differently from one another. The person who wrote their Sonic Unleashed review left IGN, and even their leaving I think is very telling in how the Sonic fanbase reacted. Actually, when you search them on Twitter, this is the first thing that comes up. A big creator saying something that isn't true when they left due to a passing in their family. The IGN beef with the Sonic community goes past the audience and extends to creators with the same mindset. I really can't comprehend the logic of IGN don't like what I like, so IGN bad. Let me spread it because they don't like Sonic. These are just game reviews. People get so mad over them, but it's just a random individual's opinion on a game. There's piles of reviews that you're going to agree with and piles you just won't. A well-written review explains why they thought these things of each game, so you can understand their reason of how they feel. But I can guarantee you almost everyone saying these things doesn't even read these reviews. And they just jump to the score at the bottom to see whether to make a Twitter thread or not. This feels like in 2017, whenever Anthony Fantano would say he didn't like a popular album and everyone would lose their mind. Because of there being one disagreement, they begin to question how closely their tastes truly align with the reviewer. But really, none of that matters. 
when a new Lil Uzi Vert project drops and I'm shaking in excitement, I know Fantano isn't really going to care since he's not much of a fan and will likely review it poorly. This actually makes him a better reviewer because if you know the reviewer's taste, when Fantano says Uzi's new project is an absolute banger, that must mean it's really something special. Now, the difference between him and a review conglomerate like Destructoid or IGN is obviously that he's an individual, so it's impossible not to lump everyone's opinion together in a conglomerate. So let's say IGN doesn't traditionally like Sonic games and gives them generally poor scores and reviews. So when IGN says Sonic Mania is truly a great journey back into what initially made Sonic great, then it's probably amazing and tells you it's something worth checking out. IGN already only reviews games in the area from 60 to 100, with anything rarely going under that. So for the audience to want more positivity and less harsh criticism, then we're moving that limit to 80 to 100. I respect a writer's genuine opinion, good or bad. People are also mad that in most of the Colors Ultimate reviews, they mention other Sonic games being bad in the beginning, but for a writer, I can understand why they mention this. To a reader, it's an elephant in the room that must be addressed. And while we've heard it a million times, not everyone has. And a lot of people are like, okay, you like this, but do you like the bad ones? This gives confidence to the reader that this game stands out above those entries. Any reviewer would do this regardless of the series. And they're not just dogging on Sonic games like you might think. You've likely heard the claim, IGN doesn't like Sonic, which maybe could have been true at a certain point, but isn't the case now. In case you don't know, Sonic Stadium's own Dreadnoughts works at IGN, and there has definitely been an increase in varying opinions on Sonic. Hence them giving Colors and Colors Ultimate a good score. I suppose Sonic fans think that IGN has had the same writers forever, but it's definitely more of a revolving door than people give it credit for. One thing I would personally recommend to help with the issue is giving more unique personalities to each writer. It sounds silly, but I'd recommend something like Phase, where each member's name is a short, simple, memorizable word. Like instead of Jake McGulp again, they would go by IGN Jake and would maybe put three icons of their favorite genres of games in their banners. And with multiples of the same name, they would just choose their own permanent alias when they start there, like Destructoid Bobby. I don't know, free suggestion. So is IGN bad and hate Sonic? No. They're a group of people, some of whom love Sonic. I think blaming IGN is kind of an old meme in the community, but it's been a persistent one that's never left. Everywhere I see, IGN doesn't care about Sonic. Which doesn't even make sense, because that would only be valid if they refused to review the Sonic games. But you know who loves Sonic? The Sonic Show. The number one source of all Sonic news. If you hit the bell, you are scientifically proven smarter than 99% of all other beings, bang, bang, thus bang. making you an alpha human simply for pressing a bell. Follow my new Instagram at The Sonic Show. I'm late to the Instagram game, so I gotta get those numbers up. Also, watch my live stream, Sonic Show Live. I'm going live there more. And now that I'm home, I will schedule the over 10 hour long Sonic X marathon. IGN and Sonic fans, forming an alliance? Perhaps. I love you all, and peace. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no way. Anytime yeah. now. Hey, that's now. Shut up. Select the stage. Right away. Go. I die hard. Did you insert a memory card? Let's rock. Hey, it's not his speed. Yeah. Nobody's faster than me. Ready? Go. What do you mean? Long time.